Welcome back everyone to my let's play of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Last episode we got the Power Glove, which is now going to allow us to uh, lift up a bunch of these uh, gray rocks. And uh, similar to the Pegasus Boots that we got uh, after defeating uh, the boss of the Eastern Palace and showing the Pendant of Courage to uh, Sarasala, um, these, uh, this item is gonna open up a lot of the overworld, uh, some new secrets, and we're gonna be, uh, showing them off and exploring, uh, them in this episode. So we're gonna start off here, uh, by getting another fish. Uh, last time we, uh, threw the fish into the lake. Uh, this time we're going to, uh, take the fish to the merchant. Last episode we, uh, sold the merchant, uh, the good bee. And uh, this time we'll, we'll give him a different animal. We'll sell him the fish. So, here you can throw the fish around. Uh, you will drop the fish if you get hit by an enemy. Uh, luckily, though, these guards have really bad vision, and we can sneak by them pretty easily. But yeah, once we're uh, past that little screen in there, we're pretty much in the clear. As long as we don't talk with those uh, two women in the village who summon soldiers, uh, we'll be uh, safe here to deliver the fish. Now, when we deliver the fish, we get quite a few things. Uh, he gives us 21 rupees, 8 bombs, 10 arrows, and a large magic decanter. So, uh, we get quite a little uh, bit of rewards for, I guess, going out of the way to deliver this fish to him. Hey, they say eating fish makes you smart. You have to give me this fish for this stuff, okay? Done! And there's a whole bunch of stuff. He pops out. And, uh, yep. So we've uh, sold everything we can to the merchant. We could, uh, if we want, sell another uh, gold uh, bee to him, but there's easier ways to get money. And money won't be a problem for the most part. Let's see if we can get a new fortune here. Oh, nope, still getting the mushroom one. So we could get another one here. Usually uh, you'll be able to get new fortunes after you uh, Complete uh, what the old fortune was so I Guess they ain't marking that one complete because we haven't gotten the uh, the powder yet from the uh, Witch So we're gonna head over there and Get that powder and uh, Go explore uh, the area beyond the uh, the magic shop we were blocked off from doing show earlier because uh, of one of those gray blocks, but hey, now we have the uh, power glove, so to get the magic powder, we head on in, and magic powder, we can sprinkle it on many things, so one thing you can do is you can sprinkle it on those uh, green guys over there, and they turn into like a crazy weird looking like enemy, so, but, joink. But okay, and uh, let's uh, head to the uh, fortune teller now that we've gotten that uh, uh, magic powder. Now uh, we should be able to get a different uh, fortune. So let's head on in. What's up, fortune teller? Yeah, what's my fortune? And yeah, we'll get a free heart refill there. So the true hero will find the moon pearl in the mountain tower. That'll be the item in uh, the tower where we're getting the third uh, pendant. The Pendant of Wisdom. The Pendant of Power is the one that we got in our uh, last episode, so. We have another fortune we can get here. Let's see if we get it. You will meet Zora living in the lake at the river's source. Okay. We were uh, hinted at Zoro earlier by that uh, man in the village who had the overgrown yard. And Zoro apparently has that item that turns people into fish. So yeah, hey, we just froze that guy. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode, the hammer. Uh, it's an item we're going to get later on from a future dungeon. Um, we'll also get a clue about the hammer later, but uh, we were told uh, we're going to be told later on that uh, if you freeze an enemy and then uh, hit them with the hammer, um, a lot of times you'll get uh, a magic uh, decanter to uh, uh, 
fill up our new magic. Let's pick up this rock here, and now we can head on over to uh, Zoro's uh, lake, and also we can head to uh, the Wishing Well. The Waterfall of Wishing is just around the corner. Hey, we got some magic right there. Ah! Don't. Alright, let's head on up here. Watch the crabs, they take off a lot of hearts. Ouch. Now, we have to hit uh, Zoro first because the uh, waterfall um, of wishing there, um, it's blocked off by the blue water. You uh, can't walk in the blue water. You can walk in the uh, light blue water, but the blue water, it just uh, puts you back into the land. Zoros, if you hit them, uh, you can pick them up and carry them and throw them around at other other Zoros, so. We'll just waste our B here, because we want to have an empty bottle for the um, Waterfall of Wishing. You see the B is similar to the good B, it will just fly around and sting enemies. And we head over here to the um, upper right corner. Stand here, and King Zoro will pop up. What do you want, little man? Do you have something you want to ask me? Nah, I just want to drop by. Well, you're welcome to see my fishy face whenever. So all you have to do is just leave the screen, or just leave where he pops up out of, and head back, and now we can select that we want the fishers. This is why we needed that 500 rupees, so. Very, um, uh, it's the most expensive item that we're gonna be really buying. So, single purchase. We're gonna use a lot of rupees on, uh, at uh, a pond of happiness uh, and what we can do there is we can increase our bomb and arrow capacity and we get another piece of heart now with the flippers we can enter the dark blue water you press the A button you can swim a little bit uh, faster unlike some future Zelda games you can't dive in this game so uh, So we'll just swim, and now we can enter the waterfall here. And we can upgrade a few items here. So, yeah, we want to throw an item in. So, first thing we want to throw in is we want to throw in our boomerang. Much like how we had a regular boomerang in Zelda 1, and then we upgraded to the magic boomerang. If we throw the boomerang in this pond, we get a magical boomerang. And this will now will fly uh, faster, and it will go all the way across the screen. Now let's throw another item. We can throw an empty bottle in, and uh, the fairy will refill the empty bottle with uh, a green uh, potion. Green potions refill your magic meter. Makes sense, because your magic meter is green. So, And then another thing we want to throw in here is we want to throw in our shield. So we had a blue uh, boomerang turn into a red boomerang, throw a blue shield into the pond, and we can get a red shield. And uh, the red shield will now allow us to block uh, some additional attacks, such as fireballs, like the fireballs that the Zoros shoot. So Now, in addition to being able to swim, uh, the flippers, uh, remember Zoro said another thing, he gives us the ability to use uh, these teleporters. There are six in total, um, and um, three pairs of linked. So we take that one there, and we end up here. And this is that uh, uh, pond of happiness that I mentioned that we're going to be spending a lot of rupees on. And we throw some rupees in here. And at first we only get the option to throw five or twenty. We're just going to throw twenty, so... Now, we get these little uh, options here, uh, and uh, it gives a little fortune, and the fortune just really affects the drop rates, so, so right now we have uh, great luck, so uh, enemies uh, have certain drop tables, so some enemies will say like, some enemies will drop like uh, a single rupee, uh, maybe a five rupee, and an hour would be their rare drop. Well, if you have, like, uh, great luck, uh, you're more likely to get the rare drop. Uh, if you have, like, bad luck, then the rare drop won't drop at all. 
So it's basically just telling you it affects your drop rate. So that might be one reason why you might want to, you know, throw maybe five rupees in uh, if you really want to affect your drop rates. But for the most part, it's not really important. So most people can just really ignore this. You're mainly here to throw rupees in to uh, get this fairy to appear. Every 100 rupees you throw in here, uh, she will appear and she'll give you the option to increase your bombs or your arrows. So I'm just going to fast forward here uh, until I uh, throw all the rupees that I want. Um, I'm going to go for bombs first. Uh, bombs are... Since you only can have a cannon at first, uh, you're going to run through your bombs really quickly. Um, now, uh, you can have up to 50 bombs and up to 70 arrows. Every time you make a wish, uh, it'll increase your capacity by 5, except for the final. So, uh, when we have 40 bombs and we make a wish for more bombs, uh, she'll just give us 10 at that upgrade. Same with the arrows, when we have 60 arrows and you uh, make your final wish for more arrows, then she will uh, uh, increase it from 60 to 70. So. And if you uh, try to get another wish after you've maxed out your bombs and your arrows, then she just says, I can't grant you any more wishes. Uh, but there's someone who may be able to do that, uh, and she tells you about the fairy in the waterfall. You want to swim under this bridge. We've got this guy camping out here. Yo, Felfo, you seem to be in a heap of trouble. This is all the help I can get you. We get our third magic bottle. We'll be getting our fourth one for a long, long time, so... Get used to just having three bottles. So. Alrighty, let's uh, swim around and uh, we can get into another one of those uh, warp points, but we can also check out, uh, we were told uh, by that guy living under the rock uh, by the Desert Palace that, hey, uh, you might want to check out the cave east of Lake Hylia. Some interesting things over there, so... I'm gonna head over there and there's another one of those uh, warp points. So now we can uh, head over this way and uh, we can lift that one rock by the uh, cave where we got the good bee and the ice rod. And there's another hidden uh, thing here. Here we got this guy here, we get 20 rupees and he just gives us a little bit of advice. You can earn a lot of rupees by defeating enemies. It's the secret of my success. Ah, what a waste. But I guess if you're just like going for like 100% completion, seeing everything, uh, you know, uh, you may just want to come back here, make one trip, and uh, get the ice rod at this time. But I want to get the ice rod to uh, help defeat those uh, uh, the mold worms uh, in the desert palace easier, so we can get another good bee. There we go. You can only have one good bee at a time, so we can't fill up on a whole bunch of good bees. Uh, so I just talked about the mold worms, the boss there. Uh, the good bee works on regular enemies, but there is actually one boss that the good bee actually works on. Uh, there's a moth boss in uh, one of the future judges, and that Zor appeared right on that whirlpool that we wanted to use. So this is the second of the linked uh, whirlpools, and this one takes us to this little pond to the um, west of the sanctuary. And speaking of sanctuary, that's where we're going to uh, end our episode. But uh, before we uh, end in the sanctuary, there's a little thing we can do. Uh, here is the other uh, warp tile. This one takes us to the lake where we threw the fish from uh, a while ago. And those are all our warp points, uh, the water warp points. But uh, remember when we were going to the sanctuary initially with Zelda? Uh, there was that one room uh, that had those two walls that we couldn't break down. We didn't have bombs and or the Pegasus boots to break down those walls. Well, now we have the Pegasus boots, and we also have the uh, Power Glove. And that allows us to move those stones, push this uh, tombstone, and we end up back here in this area. Now we can either dash into that wall or use a bomb. I'll just dash. I don't want to waste bombs, even though we will get a bomb refill here. So... 
we'd have to wait for the bomb to uh, explode, and yeah, it's just easier to dash. If we get some more rupees, we can spend them on uh, that wishing well again. I'm gonna let the rats live, because, you know, remember, rats are friends. And this should, of course, look familiar. We can just uh, pull this lever and sneak back out. And I bet you Zelda and them were probably uh, really freaked out. They're like, huh, what's going on? Oh, wait, it's Fell Fell. And they actually have some new dialogue. If you defeat the wizard, the soldiers may regain their sanity. Go seek dependence. You should follow the marks the Elder made on your map when you explore. If you don't know what to do, you can also visit a fortune teller. Well, thanks for the advice, Zelda, and we'll take that advice on our next episode. Take care, have a good day. Bye!